Oh, hello there. What's going on, everyone? So glad that you're here. Welcome to the experience. Welcome to the journey. I'm pretty sure there might be pupils here who have heard of me, who have joined my classes during their O levels. Or sometimes you might be someone who was curious and dropped in. Completely fine. It doesn't matter who I am, it is what I'm about to do with you, right? That's the main thing. So here's the deal. If you join today's session, you should remember that this is exclusively for A-level pupils, all right? So if you're, oral, if you're an O-level pupil, don't, uh, you know, don't stress about learning something from the seminar. You might be curious, okay? You might want to know what's going on. That's completely fine. Do not stress about learning if you are an O-level pupil. And this is not, this is not English language, okay? This is not general English. This is not English grammar. This is an A-level arts subject called English. Hope you guys have heard of it. Subject number 73, right? So again, this is not general English, okay? This is subject number 73, an arts subject, a subject where you learn English as a what language? You learn English as a first language. That is why this subject is confused a lot. So many pupils who join, they think that we're going to teach them English language. It's something connected to general English. Not at all. Once again, this is a completely different subject. A whole completely different subject that this is. So we're talking about English subject number 73 for the A-level pupils. So why are you here? Obviously, one, you must have been curious or you must have genuinely wanted to learn this subject. It's really difficult to find good teachers who teach English. Uh, subject number 73. And what's going on, Tamali? Glad you're here. I remember you, Amna. Glad you're here. And uh, yeah, Alpha, what's going on? Thank you for the warm welcomes. Okay, so happy to see some of my pupils here. So again, judging by the number in the seminar, you guys can understand that this is not a famous subject. But why should you be learning subject number 73? Or why should you be learning English as a first language for the A-levels? Is because of something called a Z-score, right? So if you want to go to campus, Campus known in Nangnangi, you have to have something called a Z-score. And remember, the most toughest subjects to get A's for will give you a higher Z-score if you get an A for that subject. Now, you guys know that the most toughest subjects, okay, in your syllabus or the toughest subjects that is uh, to get A's for, if you get an A for that subject, automatically you are going to get a higher Z score. That's why I advocate English for the A-levels, especially if you want to go to campus. And especially if you're doing arts, okay? So only arts pupils, only A-level pupils. And if you really, really want to go to campus, you should be learning English, subject number 73. Again, in this English package, we have a language part and we have a literature part. So again, remember, there's a separate language part, which everybody can get marks for. So half the paper is made of language and the other half is made of literature. So you guys know that literature cannot be studied without a syllabus. They'll give you a few genres. They'll give you a few categories and you have to be studying from those categories. For example, you have four genres in our syllabus. You've got dramas, you've got short stories, you have novels and finally you have poetry. So these are the four genres in the A-level syllabus. If you have done English literature for your O-levels, you would have faced or you would have seen equal genres. You would have seen categories like this in your O-level syllabus. If you did English literature for your O-levels, okay, so listen very carefully. If you would have done English literature for your O-levels or if you are hoping to do English 
as a first language for your A-levels. Arts, by the way, A-levels, arts, I cannot stress this enough. Maths karno lang in repa. If you're doing commerce, this is not the class for you. This is not the seminar for you, okay? Not because I don't like maths and bio and commerce pupils. What I'm saying is this is an art subject. So only arts pupils need to learn this. If not, you are basically uh, um, wasting your time. So we're going to jump right in, okay? So here's the deal. Today, we have chosen a short story called Everline out of your four genres. So obviously, I talked about four genres for the A-level syllabus. What are those four genres? One, you know, obviously, dramas. In your A-level syllabus, there are five dramas, okay? So you don't have to choose all five of those dramas. You have to choose only two dramas. And in your A-level syllabus, there is another category called short stories. There are six short stories. Two short stories by male writers and four short stories by female writers. So don't worry about these six short stories. Today, we are going to focus on only one short story. What is the name of that short story? Monoline. Everline. Everline by James Joyce. Again, I told you two short stories by male writers and four short stories by female writers. Four plus Two is, Kian, Kian, the six, right? My God, Javed sir is teaching you maths also. Maths pupils also, don't go, don't go. Stay in my class, I'll teach you maths also. So four plus two is six. Altogether, you have six short stories in your syllabus. Two short stories by male writers and four short stories by female writers. Today, Eveline by James Joyce is a short story by a male writer, obviously. Don't let his name fool you, okay? Don't let his name fool you, James Joyce. Is a man, he's a male writer. Only two male writers are in our syllabus who wrote short stories in the short story genre, in the short story category. There are only two male writers, and one is James Joyce. He wrote Everline, and that is the title of this seminar. So I hope you guys know what we are doing today, okay? Everline by James Joyce, English language and literature for the A levels is what we are learning right now. Speaking about teachers teaching English language and literature, you can't find a lot of teachers regarding this subject. So that's why I wanted to teach it. Not because we have a lot of pupils learning a famous subject, not really. There is a handful of pupils who can't find a good teacher to teach them English language and literature for the A-levels arts. And I wanted to fulfill that gap. I wanted to cover that void and that's why we are here. I read on the internet that if a person is doing at least two commerce subjects, it's considered commerce. That's crazy. But then this is an art subject. Okay. So yeah, boom. So um, there is like an option. There is There are some subjects that you can do in the commerce stream, but I don't think this is one of them. If you were to do arts, then obviously English language and literature for the A-levels. Subject number, Kian, subject number 73 is what you should be looking for. So now that we're talking about the subject, apologies, now that we are talking about the title of the seminar, now that we know what Everline is, Everline by James Joyce, one of the two male writers in your syllabus who wrote short stories. So James Joyce's Everline is what we are gonna talk about. So in the beginning of the seminar itself, I want to give you a short note, but don't write this down. It's all about memorization, especially in the A-level syllabus. The more you can memorize, the more your memorization capacity is good, the easier the syllabus is. Again, why should you be learning subject number 73, English language and literature for your syllabus for the arts, uh, for the arts stream? The reason is it will give you a higher what score? It will give you a higher Z score. So if you have a ISA score, campus, right? You can go to campus, university, if you get a higher Z score. In order for you to get a higher Z score and go to university under the art stream, you can get an or you should get an A for English language and literature, subject number 73 for the arts pupils. I've said this a lot. I've said this a lot. So let's jump right in. So we're talking about Everline by James Joyce. Before we uh, talk about the, the theory of this lesson, let me begin by giving you a short note, but for memorization, okay? Don't write a single thing down. I don't like giving notes in my class. There are PDFs, there are presentations that we'll talk about. 
But right now, I want you to memorize numbers, okay? Now, everybody can memorize numbers, right? Numbers are made for memorization. The three numbers I want you to memorize right now, and we are learning about monoline, the ever line by James Joyce. Don't forget that. I write his name here, James Joyce. All right. I want you to memorize three numbers, okay? The first number is 1914. The second number is 16. And the third number is 19. 1914, 16, and 19. So when we talk about 1914, you guys can imagine that, okay, James Joyce had written or published Everline in 1914. Puluang Ned. Already within the first few minutes, You've learned something about Everline by James Joyce. How many short stories are in your A-level arts English syllabus? Six short stories, two short stories by male writers, and Everline is one of those two short stories. So Everline by James Joyce, who is a male writer, a male writer, these are important, okay? You should learn all six short stories. So let's begin with Everline. The problem is many pupils think that Everline is a difficult short story, but not exactly. It is difficult as long as you don't have a good teacher to teach you. So today you have a good teacher. You have perhaps the best teacher teaching English literature for you guys. Humbly best, okay? Humble and best. So I want to talk about Everline and the three years that the three numbers that you have to remember is 1914, 16, and 19. 1914 is when Everline was published, right? So Everline was published in 1914. Uh, it came in a collection called the Dubliners. Dubliners. Okay, so Everline is a short story found in a short story collection. How many short stories were in that collection? There were 16 short stories in that collection. Can you, can you believe this? How do I know this, by the way? I Googled. Man Google Kara. I Googled Everline by no, not really. There is something called a resource book. Now, for your A-level syllabus, you've got textbooks, you have a teacher's guide, and you have a resource book. So a teacher must be very thorough with the resource book and the teacher's guide. And a resource book, there are 16 short stories in the short story collection called the Dubliners. What was the year that the Dubliners was published? 1914. And then finally, the protagonist, the protagonist. What do you mean by the protagonist? pro ta go -nist. The protagonist is the main character that you find in a story. Now, for example, here, you guys might give me a second. You guys might know in this case, the protagonist's name is Everline. Uh, the short story is also called Everline. So boom, if you join A with B, you know that the short story is about this character called Everline. Finally got my electricity, was teaching you without electricity. Give me one second, okay? So one more time, one more time, Everline by James Joyce is a short story out of the six short stories in your syllabus. It was written by a male writer. How many male writers do you have out of the six short stories? Two male writers are found out of the six short stories. So in that case, you know, there are four female writers who wrote four short stories and two male writers who wrote two short stories respectively. So here's the deal, okay, here's the deal. Now we're talking about Everline in your syllabus. You know that there are six short stories and Everline is one of them. And you've got to remember this. You've got to remember the three numbers we talked about. One is 1914, the other one is 16, and the last number is 19. It won't be difficult for you to memorize these because they all fall under one category. Puluang 1914, 16, and 19 are easy numbers to memorize. Everline is, was found in a short story collection called the Dubliners. So what do you mean by Dubliners? People who live in Dublin. Where is Dublin, you ask? Dublin is in the United Kingdom, somewhere near Ireland, okay? And James Joyce is also an Irish writer. So again, from the United Kingdom, okay? So they, they come from the UK. The short story is the writer, James Joyce, again, a male writer, one of the two male writers under the short story genre. 
He wrote Eveline in 1914. There are 16 short stories inside this short story collection called The Dubliners. And the protagonist, what's the name of the protagonist? Eveline was 19 years, or she was a bit above 19 years, 19 plus. Like me, okay, I'm also 19. I'm also 19 years old, okay? Believe me, like you guys, like you guys, 19 plus. All right, so here's the deal, okay? Um, when we talk about uh, Eveline, you have to memorize this for the background of the short story. If you are unable to talk about the background of the short story, especially in your exam, in the exam, there is a part called the analysis, or the appreciation part. And when you write about a lesson, you should give a introduction about that lesson. So right now, you know a good introduction about Eveline by James Joyce. Uh, it was, it debuted or it was published in 1914, found in the collection called The Dubliners. It is one of how many short stories? One of 16 short stories, okay, in this collection called The Dubliners. There are 16 short stories. Now that you have memorized that, we can jump right into the reading session. But I honestly don't like reading short stories. I think reading short stories are a waste of time. So I rather digest the short story and break it into comprehensible sections. What have I done now, Nangi? I have broken the short story into comprehensible sections. And we call this in my class, the digested document. So again, imagine if you are reading, okay? Let's say that you keep reading the short story. It has around 2,500 words. The short story has around 2,500 words. So let's say you're reading the short story. And when you read until the end, you might have forgotten what happened in the beginning. That happens a lot, right? That happens a lot, especially when you are unfamiliar with reading. We don't like reading nowadays, right? We like spending time on TikTok. We like watching YouTube videos. We like watching educational videos, right? Like Javed sir. So here's the deal. That doesn't work when you're learning A-level uh, English language and literature. Subject number 73 for arts pupils exclusively. Arts pupils, okay. Um, so in this case, we have this thing called a digested document. Raise your hands up if you have read Eveline before this. If you have, you know, if you're familiar with the short story, put your hands up. Everybody here is new. Ah, some of you have. That's amazing. So yeah, you come to the right place, okay? If you want to learn Eveline properly, and especially if you were to go to your exam, this, 20, this, this badge, right? If you're from the 2022 badge, and if you were to face your exam in the near future, this is going to be really helpful. Because right now, what have I taught you? Eveline by James Joyce, a male writer, male, Mona writer, the Koedinia, United Kingdom, Irish, right? A male Irish writer written in 1940, 14, uh, is one of how many short stories? Is one of 16 short stories found in a collection called the Dubliners. Dublin, it's in Ireland. Ireland is in the United Kingdom. So, you have memorized 50% of this short story, okay? In the exam, you should be able to write an introductory paragraph regarding Eveline by James Joyce if you were to choose it in the exam to write a analysis or appreciation for. Be mindful that if you are going to the exam, you can't choose one short story. You have to choose one, two, three. It depends on the question, okay? So they will never ask you a analysis or appreciation from one short story they will give you two, three short stories. So you have to be able to write or carry two, three short stories in your answer. So don't worry about that. At the moment, again, one more time, Eveline by James Joyce, a male Irish writer, was published in 1914 alongside 16 short stories. The collection of 16 short stories called The Dubliners. Hope you understand that. We're going to move forward. Okay, so right now we're going to start reading. So if you have read Eveline, you know that this is not the order of the short story. The short story has a different order. That's confusing. Usually when a writer writes a short story, it's uncurated. You don't know what, what is the, uh, what's the story. You have no idea about the background of the short story. You have no idea about the characters. So reading the short story raw is quite difficult to understand. You should read the same short story five, six times to understand what is going on. But here, 
one shot kewa terung gatta okay with javits we call javits a one shot one shot kewa terung gatta okay what's what's behind you is it a, yeah it's a c yeah it's a c computer exactly that's behind me that's the computer that we use for graphic designing and stuff we'll talk about that later okay i'm glad you asked me now for example everline is so simple that it doesn't have a presentation but if you guys are familiar with interpreter of maladies boom a very difficult short story we did not we are not doing this today obviously it's really complicated you need to have a thorough session a learning session if you want to learn interpreter of maladies so boom i make these using that computer right there boom graphic designing stuff all right we'll talk about that later so right now we'll talk about everline so if you have read everline before this nangi you know that everline does not begin like this but i have changed the order of the short story to make it more easily understandable and tell me understanding only is that enough or should you memorize parts of the short story you've got to memorize also so we are not going to understand we're not only going to understand the short story not only read it but we're also going to memorize the short story so again i'm so glad you guys are here we'll jump right in what's the name of the protagonist what do you mean by protagonist main character the protagonist obviously is everline the short story is also called everline a memory of a field um and child's play so that's how i'm going to begin the short story okay so there's a memory of the protagonist everline and then there is a memory of child's play in the field one time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children then a man from belfast brought the field and built houses in it not like they are little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs not that important okay this part is not important at all don't worry so if a part is not important we won't spend time reading it but there is a flashback regarding child's play i used a very important word right now what back flash back so what do you mean by flashback the audience or the reader is taken to the past so we are given a past idea a past memory and this is a memory also known as a monoback the flashback we mention it here flash flashback is what we call it and that is a technique actually that is a technique in our syllabus taking the reader to the past giving the reader an idea about the past is called a flashback one time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children then a man from belfast brought the field and built houses in it not like their little brown houses so again everline comes from little comes from a little brown house that is obviously a simile right so if you don't know what similes are it is the comparison of two nouns using the word like as than so here we have a simile not like they are little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs so everline comes from a little mona house the everline comes from a little brown house so you can say that everline comes from a small family a small background she comes from a lack of a, a family with the lack of luxury the past children of the avenue is the next part the children of the avenue used to play together in that field the divines the waters the duns so these are the family names or you can call them surnames divines waters duns little keog the cripple and what do you mean by a cripple the person who does not function properly they have some kind of a disability that's what you call a crippled so there is a crippled called little keog but remember this does not take place in the present this takes place in the past so because this takes place in the past what did we call this baba we call this section a flash back the entirety the bulk of the short story again everline by james joyce male writer a irish male writer everline comes from a short story collection called the dubliners there were 16 short stories in that collection and everline is uh, is a uh, is made of flashbacks the bulk of the short story is made of flashbacks that means a very few things happen in the present okay a lot of the story takes place in the past 
So we have the past children of the avenue. What are their names? Family names, Divines, Waters, Duns. And then there is another child called little Keog. And Keog is a crippled, is someone with a disability. And little Keog, the crippled, she, that means Eveline, her brothers and sisters. So what can you tell me about Eveline? She comes from a family where she has brothers and sisters. Be mindful of this. These are the characters. Uh, these characters are not important. For example, Divines, Waters, Duns, Little Keog, we don't find them in the present. What's the reason? This is a monobacter. This is called a flashback. Uh, Ernest never played. So Ernest, again, is one of Eveline's brothers. Eveline had, uh, had brothers and sisters, more than one brother, more than one sister. So Ernest is one of Eveline's brothers. Ernest never played. Ernest, however, never played. He was too grown up. He did not play with these children. And what are their names? The names of these children, they are the Divines, the Waters, the Duns, and little Keog. Hope you can memorize them now itself one more time. Not that difficult, right? The Divines, the Waters, the Duns, and little Keog. Ernest never played, obviously. He was too grown up to play with them. And uh, the father in this case, and whose father are we talking about? Eveline's father or Ernest's father? What do you think? Whose father is this? Send me a message through the chat box. Both of their fathers. Why? Both of their fathers. What's the reason? The reason is Eveline and Ernest are brother and sister. Isn't that easy? Eveline and Ernest are brother and sister. So both of them have one father. <clears throat> I, I believe they have one. They have to have one father, if you know what I mean. All right. But they're not, not that important, okay? So don't worry about this. These are children who played with uh, Eveline and her brother, Ernest. Ernest never played, obviously. But children who played with Eveline are the Divines, the Waters, the Duns, and little Keog, the seemingly antagonized father. So I told you that Eveline is the protagonist. What do you mean by the protagonist? The main character. The, uh, the character who is the most important in a story. Uh, the character whom the plot revolves around is called the uh, protagonist. So like the protagonist, there is something called the antagonist. If the protagonist is the good character, is the hero of the story, the antagonist is the villain of the story. So whom is antagonized in Eveline by James Joyce? 1914, 16 short stories were found in a collection called The Dubliners. And Eveline was how? many years old. She was 19 years old when the story took place. Okay, Eveline is the protagonist. But now while reading this, is Eveline telling you the story or is someone else telling you Eveline's story? What do you think is going on here? Eveline is not telling you the story, right? If Eveline were telling you the story, she would use the words I, my, mine, my father, my brother, my friends. But here, we see a third person telling Eveline's story. That's called a what narration? Third person narration, baby. Well done, Nangi. It's called a third person narration. So I'm going to mention it here in my short note. So in the end, we are going to use this short note. Don't forget, not only was Eveline written by James Joyce, a male Irish, UK, Kian Irish, okay? Irish writer. Um, it came in a uh, collection of 16 short stories called The Dubliners. Eveline was 19 plus years. She was 19 plus years of age. It is a what person narration. In the short note, it is a third person narration. Third person narration. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So how did we discover that Eveline by James Joyce? is a third person narration by reading the story. When you read the story, you understand that Eveline is not telling you the story. Eveline being the protagonist, she does not tell you the story. It is a third person, it's a third person narration. Uh, someone who is not a character telling you the story is called a third person narration. If Eveline was telling you her story, now for example, if Javed sir was telling you my story, it would be a first person narration. A can Eveline by James Joyce, one of 16 short stories found in the collection called The Dubliners. 1914 is when this collection was published. 
Eveline is not a first person narration, it's a third person narration. Puluang ne the ne. Uh, so we find Ernest, one of Eveline's brothers, he did not play with them, right? And the father was antagonized. Her father used to often hunt them down out in the fields with his blackthorn stick. So blackthorn stick is kind of a club. It's kind of a pollakwage, deke deke pollakwage. And the word blackthorn is not pleasant, right? Now imagine if there was a dog and you named the dog blackthorn. I would be afraid of that dog when I hear its name. Blackthorn? Blackthorn, do you understand? Blackthorn does not sound like a fun name. But then this is a blackthorn stick. The father used to, whose father? Eveline's father, Ernest's father, used to hunt them down. Again, literally, or is that a hyperbole? Hunt them down. Hunt them, right? It's a, it's a hyperbole. It's not literal. Don't worry about the techniques, okay? Focus on the story. I promise I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know. So we see that Ernest, uh, and Eveline's father used to hunt them in out of the field with his blackthorn stick. When they were growing up, he, Eveline's father, had never gone for her. What do you mean by gone for her? Tried to attack her. All right. So again, even though he had the blackthorn stick and he hunted them down, he did not, uh, he did not want to um, hurt Eveline. Uh, is it a tool to hunt? Not exactly. No, Abdullah. Here it is like a, it's kind of a stick, you know, not an exact tool to hunt, but it is kind of like a weapon. It's kind of like a club, a blackthorn stick. Uh, so what do you understand about Eveline's father here? Eveline's father is antagonized. So what do you mean by an antagonist? It, the villain, the, the negative character of the story. So we have the protagonist. What's the name of the protagonist? Eveline, how old is Eveline? Eveline is 19 plus, right? 19 plus. And then Eveline's father is antagonized from the beginning itself. When they were children, when they were playing with their friends, the divines, the waters, the duns, little Keog, Eveline's father used to hunt them in out of the field with his blackthorn stick. When they were growing up, Eveline's father had never gone for her. Like he used to go for Harry and Ernest. My God. So here are Eveline's brothers. One, you know, Ernest already. Harry is another brother of Eveline. Easy, right? So we have Eveline. We have Eveline's brothers, Harry and Ernest. Does Eveline have sisters? Absolutely. It's mentioned here, right? Her brothers and sisters. My God, Eveline's father is a, he's a master. My God. So here you understand that Eveline did not only have brothers, he also had sisters. She also had sisters. So what are the names of Eveline's two brothers? We've got Ernest and we have Harry. It's not difficult for you to remember Harry, right? Like Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Ernest, um, I remember the name Ernest because you might have heard of Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford was a scientist. Raise your hands up. Heard of Ernest Rutherford, all about science? Nobody. A scientist, obviously. Ernest Hemingway, why not? In our syllabus, we have someone called Ernest Hemingway also, who wrote Cat in the Rain. You're a genius, Sandhuni. Okay, so exactly. We have Ernest Hemingway who wrote Cat in the Rain. I like calling it wet pussy, but that's not important. Cat in the Rain is even more shorter than Eveline. Okay, how many short stories do you find in your syllabus? Six short stories, right? And out of these six short stories, two short stories were written by what writers? Male writers. And who are these two male writers? One, we have James Joyce, who wrote Eveline. And then we have Ernest Hemingway, who wrote Cat in the Rain. Remember, the two brothers of Eveline were Harry and Ernest. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to move forward, OK? Uh, the seemingly antagonized father of Eveline and Ernest. And what's the other brother's name? Harry. So how is he antagonized? He used to hunt them down out of the field with his blackthorn stick. When they were growing up, he never, he had never gone for her like he used to go for Harry and Ernest because she was a girl. Nonetheless, you remember little Keog. Little Keog was the cripple, right? The cripple. He was, what's a cripple, by the way? We talked about little Keog here. What is a cripple? A person with disabilities but remember cripple right now is a very offensive word you can't use these words now be mindful what was the year that Eveline was written Kian, remember 19 1914 right 
Uh, was it written by itself? Was it published by itself? Or was it published in a collection? Eveline was published in a collection. What was the name of that collection? Mona Lina's the Dubliners. Where is Dublin? Dublin is in? Dublin is in the United Kingdom. Where in the United Kingdom is it? It is in Ireland. James Joyce is an Irish writer. All of these ideas you should write in the exam. You should have the memory of this. Uh, of this uh, introduction of the short story, we're going to move forward. So little Keog looking out for them, but usually little Keog used to keep nicks. Keep nicks means looking out or watch out. He's on the lookout, watching out for them. Why? Why were they watching out? Why was he watching out for them? Because uh, Eveline's father, right? Eveline's father would hunt them down uh, using his what stick? What thorn? White thorn? No, black thorn stick. Eveline's father used to hunt them down, hunt Eveline and her brothers. We have a little keog kept watch. You have to remember all of these, but in the exam, you won't be using all of these ideas. Be mindful about that, okay? Uh -um. Past happiness is what we're going to talk about after this. So again, we are in a what back? We are talking about the past. So what kind of a back is this? It's a flashback. When the reader is taken to the past, it's called a flashback. We are still in a flashback. What are we learning about? Eveline, and we are learning about her childhood and the past. She has two brothers or had two brothers. In this case, we have Harry and we have Ernest, and then we have her sisters. We talked about her friends. They were the divines, the waters and the duns. Remember her friends? The divines, the waters, the duns, and then little Keog are her friends, okay? But now, can you find them? No, you can't, because this is a flashback. Still, they seem to have been rather happy then. Her father was not so bad then. And besides, her mother was alive, ah. Her father was not bad then. What does that mean? Her father is bad now. Her father is waternized. What do you call it? Antagonized. Eveline's father is antagonized. And not only that, but her mother was alive. Simple past tense. Doesn't happen anymore. What does that mean? Eveline's mama, Eveline's ammis, seti pochi. Ane pao, Eveline's mama is dead. So at the moment, do you know how old Eveline is? Eveline is 19 years old. How do you know she's 19 years old? I told you. I told you that Eveline was 19 years old. Uh, this is a story about Eveline. She was the protagonist. Two brothers. What are the names of her two brothers? We have Ernest and Harry. And then we have her sisters. They were not named. Eveline's mama is dead. Eveline's father is the protagonist. Eveline's father is the antagonist. She had her childhood friends. What were the names of her childhood friends? The Waters, the Duns, and the Marat Madagane. The... Okay. We had little Kiyog, well done. And then we had the Divines. Thanks a lot, Fatima. We had the Waters, the Divines, and the Duns. And don't forget, we had little Kiyog. Little Kiyog was a healthy boy or was he a crippled? He was a... Little Kiyog was a crippled. He was... He had a disability. And then finally, we see that that was a long time ago. She had she and her brothers and sisters were all grown up and her mother was dead. So what can you understand now? She, her brothers and sisters were all grown up. Her mama is Setaboji. Her dad became a antagonist. Her dad is now the villain, the villain. We have Tizi Dana. Remember the Duns? The Duns, the three friends of the three family friends of Eveline? Friend families, whatever you call it. We have the divines, we have the waters, and we have the duns. Tizi Dun, one of the duns was dead too, and the waters had gone back to England. Um, I believe that uh, Ernest is also dead, but we couldn't find it here, right? Uh, remember, Ernest is also dead. Tizi Dun was dead too, and the waters had gone back to England. So, right now, let's talk about Frank, okay? But before we talk about Frank, it was mentioned here. I, it should have been mentioned that Ernest was dead. It's not, but it's not, I can't find it here actually. But uh, Ernest had passed away. Okay, Ernest is dead, obviously. 
um, maybe I missed it. I did not put it in the digested document. But uh, remember, Ernest was in presently. Ernest is dead, okay? So Tizzy Dunn um, was dead too, and the waters had gone to in, back to England. So at the moment, I hope, let me take you back to the short, uh, short note, okay? The short note of the short story. Hope you remember all of these, okay? Hope you remember the three main numbers. We have 19, 14, we have 16, and we have 19 plus. Evelyn, the protagonist, was 19 plus years old. There were 16 short stories in this collection called The Dubliners. Evelyn is one of those 16 short stories written by James Joyce, a male Irish writer in the United Kingdom. And right now, don't forget, it is a third person narration. So what is the plot about? Now, what is, what is meant by plot? Okay, don't write this down. But what is meant by plot? Plot in literature is another word for story. So in every, every lesson, we have something called a plot, right? Every short story, every novel, every drama, there is something called a plot. In a movie, there is something called a plot. Plot can a story. Plot is another fancy word for story. So the plot is about a predicament. Predicament. It is about a predicament. A predicament is a kind of a messy situation, okay? So if someone asks you about Everline's plot, tell them that the plot is about a predicament. Predicament is a messy situation. There's some kind of, there's something troubling Everline. We'll talk about what is troubling her, okay? There is something called a dilemma. Something called a dilemma. What's a dilemma? What's a dilemma? You have how many options? You have more than one option or you have two options, all right? It's a dilemma, okay? I uh, hope you understand what we are learning about. We have a short note regarding Evelyn right here. The short note talks about the important year. The year Evelyn was published, number of short stories found in the Dubliners. The Dubliners is the short story collection where you found the short story in, written by James Joyce. Irish writer from the United Kingdom talking about the protagonist. What's the name of the protagonist? Monaline, Eveline. And obviously she is a 19 year old girl who has, who is facing a, who is facing a predicament. What is the predicament that Eveline faces? Eveline is facing a dilemma. Dilemma. How you spell it right now? Again, if you don't know how to spell dilemma, dilemma say dilemma. The uh, dilemma, and what is the dilemma? She has two options, okay? She has option one, two options. Option one and option two, the two options that she face, that she can choose from, is one, she can stay in. Where does Eveline live? What is the short story collection called? The collection is called Dubliners, right? Dub, the Dubliners, the Dub. Liners, right? So Eveline lives in Dublin. She has one option. She can stay in Dublin. She can stay in Dublin. Or she can run away. She can elope. Elope. What do you mean by elope? Elope means Panji Pore, Panji Poite Kalyana Mudikire. Have you heard that song? Right, the Tamil song. It means, shall we run away after getting married, right? So that um, Dublin ends, oh, apologies. Dublin ends with an N, by, uh, it doesn't end with a uh, E. Dublin ends with an N. Thanks a lot. You're the best. Sanduni, coming back to the point. Uh, so what do you mean by elope or elopement? Elopement, it means running away and getting married is called elopement her second option is her elopement with frank right there is a character called frank so again who is frank if she wants to marry frank frank is her mukada frank is a lover right obviously if she wants to get nikangin manuseka you want to get married right frank is whose lover frank is everline's lover so in this case, at the moment, we are talking about Evelyn, 19 hours. Why is Hari Nedam? Very good. Okay. 19-year-old protagonist. And this protagonist is facing a predicament. She is 
facing a um, dilemma. How do you spell dilemma? Dilemma. The dilemma. The dilemma that she is facing is one: she can run, she can stay in Dublin. Dublin is Evelyn's Mugagda. Dublin is her home, right? She can stay in Dublin. Dublin is her home, or she can run away with Frank. And where is she going to run away with Frank? She is going to run away with him to Argentina. Argentina. Hope you guys. Uh, hope you guys are watching the World Cup these days. I think Argentina is playing against playing today. I don't think so. Not today, right? If some if some of you watch the football World Cup, you might know Argentina. So in Argentina, there is a place called Buenos. B e b u b e n o s. Aries. It might seem difficult, but don't worry. It's really easy. It's so easy. Okay. There's a place in Argentina called Buenos Aires, and Evelyn's option number two is to run away uh, to Buenos Aires. Sara says Argentina lost against Saudi. Seriously, who? There, there are some famous footballers in Argentina, right? Messi. Messi is in Argentina, right? L Lionel. Exactly. Yeah. Sara. Messi is in Argentina, right? No, Aries, the use of Aries in, um, in the syllabus is spelled A-Y-R-E-S. But if you look at in Google, it is A-I-R-E-S. Okay, not this spelling. We have, we have this spelling in the short story. Okay, so she has the option to stay home in Dublin or she has the option to run away to Buenos Aires. Now you know the entire story. You know the entire short story. Now, after this, we have only the reading part. So basically, this right here is the short note. If you want to know, if you want to write a paragraph about Everline by James Joyce, you can use this short note to write a paragraph about it. Don't worry. In a few minutes, I shall start writing the paragraph. Uh, and you don't have to. You don't have to even write the paragraph down as long as you have memorized the important points. As long as you know that Everline by James Joyce is one of 16 short stories found in the collection called The Dubliners. Published in 1914, revolving around the protagonist, Evelyn, a 19-year-old uh, girl, right? Or a 19-year-old girl who is facing a predicament, a dilemma, a dilemma where she has two options. One, she can stay home at Dublin or she can elope. What do you mean by elope? Elope can ne? Muka Tanala, Yanava, how do I know this word? Elope, elopement, elope. E L O P E, one moment. E L O P, elope is found in the teacher's guide. Elope is found in the teacher's guide, okay? Actually, there is a book called the resource book. In that, the word elopement is found. It means running away secretly in order to get married. So, again, if you really want to impress someone, you can say, hey, you want to elope with me? I want to elope with you, running away. So what's meant by predicament? So again, let me take you back to the short story. Predicament means there is some kind of a messy situation, problem, conflict, predicament. So what is the predicament that Evelyn faces? She can run away to Buenos Aires with, what's the name of a lover? Frank, right? She can run away with her lover to Buenos Aires. Where is Buenos Aires? Buenos Aires is in Monatina, the Argentina, right? Where Messi is, right? Uh, and then obviously uh, she can stay home at Dublin. How do you know that she lives in Dublin? The short story Everline comes in the collection called The Dubliners. How many short stories were in The Dubliners? 16 short stories, baby. You know Everline. I know for a fact. I taught you in this one hour more than what you learned in school in one term, okay? And to be honest, Everline is taught uh, a, within, within a month, you, they teach you the short story Everline. You have learned more information about Everline than what they teach you in a month in school, okay? Just in this one hour, you have learned more than what they teach you in school in months. So when you have a plan to study, it's a lot more easier. When, when you have a plan, and when someone guides you throughout your studies, it becomes a thousand times easier. So we do this every single week, okay? Every, sing every Wednesday we have a class. So again, this is the fifth Wednesday of this month. So every fifth uh, week of a month, I, I do a free seminar. 
But if you want to join Javed Sir's classes, if you want to be a part of this amazing experience, if you want to learn literature from the best, and if you want to memorize all of the important parts, okay, in the end of this session, you would have memorized so much about Everline that you can write an introductory paragraph about Everline that you, that you can, uh, that you would have even memorized the entire short story, not verbatim, not word by word, but you would have memorized the entire short story in a way that uh, will help you now you would uh, memorize the, the plot of the entire short story. Okay. So when we talk about the plot, what is the plot? The plot is a predicament. The plot is a predicament where Eveline is faced with a dilemma, a dilemma. Eveline is faced with a dilemma. And what is the dilemma? She can stay in Dublin, her home, or she can elope. What do you mean by elope? Elope can be panela, gihing. Kasada Bandinava Odipoi Kalyanam Katire, I think. Odipoi Kalyanam Katire. All right. So here's the deal. Um, so that is basically the introductory paragraph of Everline. But if you want to be a part of this family, if you want to learn English language for A levels, English language and literature, subject number 73, art subject, get an A, get a high Z score, and go to university and get a law, sweet, sweet law degree. Here's the beginning, okay? You've got to join in Isaac.com. So there's a website called Isaac.com. Hopefully all of you know about it. So in Isaac.com, I teach every Wednesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. I teach the A-level. So I teach A-level English, language and literature. So you can click on join, log into Isaac.com, click on join, fill in your details and register. We'll only take five minutes, okay? If you can use a phone, definitely you can log in and you can join into Isaac.com. So you've got to click on join or register, right? And once you have registered, you got to log in. All right. So let me log in using my student's account right here. Boom. The password is monkey, I think. Puluanga. And also, if you guys are looking for English grammar, um, there is a free seminar today at about 7 p.m. taught by Miss Artika. All right. So you can uh, drop a message to this number if you want to join that free seminar. Okay. So drop a message to this number if you want to join uh, today's free seminar regarding English grammar, Ms. Artika is teaching active and passive, okay? So uh, it's again, it's free, but then uh, all the classes are not free. Today you have joined a free session, but if you want to join the paid sessions, log into Isaac.com, create a uh, account, and then go under live classes. So look at the website, all classes, and then live classes. And when you click on live classes, you have the option to search the class that you prefer. So category should be A-level. What's the subject? English language or English language and literature. English language and literature, subject number 73. Click on that and then show all teachers, obviously, Java Dawson and boom, here we got it. So here are the four classes that you guys can join. All right. Here's the deal. If you join this class right here, if you join the grade 13 class, there are a list of free classes under this. So I hope you know how to get to this. Isaac.com, register, join, log in, go into all classes, live classes, and then look for the class that you want to join, A-level. Grade isn't necessary. Uh, click on the subject that you want, and the teacher's name is Javed Osen. So in this case, if you join um, this class right here, if you join the fast track theory class on Wednesdays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., you guys get all of the other classes for free. In your A-level syllabus, there are five novels. Out of these five novels, you have to choose two novels. There are five dramas. Out of these five dramas, you've got to choose two dramas. So there are 24 poems in your A-level syllabus. You have to memorize all 24 of those poems. Not one, not four, all 24 of them. So all of those, Lessons will be covered in this in this series of classes. You guys can join for, for the month of December. Uh, and be mindful that if you join this class right here on the left, all the other classes are free. Okay. So um, hopefully you guys will be a part of the uh, this Isaac family. Hopefully you'll be a part of my family. And hopefully you'll be learning English language and literature for the A-levels. Subject number 73, art subject from the best. Javed, sir. All right. So now that we know who Frank is, who is Frank? Frank is Eveline's lover. And Eveline is going to 
marry and run away, run away and get married, run away and get married, right? Odi poi kalyan and katere, right? Panela gihin kasada bandin nanova. So here we have Frank. So what's the word? Well done, Sanduni. Elope. She is about to, she's going to elope with Frank. Um, and, and yes, Fatima, we have, we have a YouTube channel. I'll direct you to the channel also. Okay. If you can drop a message to us through WhatsApp, I'll direct you to the channel. And yes, this, this recording will be also in that channel in the near future. Not now, not immediately, but in the near future, it will be in, uh, in our YouTube channel called Isaac.com. Isaac is the YouTube channel's name. I'll, I'll share the details with you, okay? So we have Frank and Frank's profession, Frank's job. He had started as a deck boy at a pound, a British sterling pound. He had started as a deck boy at a pound a month on a ship of the Allen Line. The shipping company's name is called Allen Line. He was a deck boy. He worked in this shipping company on a ship of the shipping company the Allen line going to uh, going out to Canada. He told her the names of the ships he had been on and the names of the different services. He had sailed through the, stra the Straits of um, Megalon, that is a, a route uh, in the ocean. That is a route that you can take in the Pacific Ocean, not important, Straits of Megalon. And he told her stories of the terrible Patagonians. So this is Frank's profession, okay? Not that important, but here, is a very important part. This is a flashback with Frank and Eveline. Who is Frank? Frank is Eveline's lover, right? And the lover whom Eveline is going to elope with. The lover whom Eveline, the protagonist, female protagonist, 19 years old, the lover whom Eveline is going to elope with. How well she remembered the first time she had seen him. Who is him? Him is Frank. So again, Eveline is in love. Eveline is madly in love with Frank that she is going to elope with him. What do you mean by elope? Running away and getting married. He was lodging in a home on the main road where she used to visit. Thank you, sir. I'll join the class via Isaac.com. I was actually trying to find your number long ago. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, Nahumia. Thanks a lot for the feedback. Always an honor to be called your teacher. And uh, hopefully the session is, uh, is, you know, helps you out with your exams. All right. So we have that. We see that Frank uh, lived near Eveline's house. How well she remembered the first time she had seen him. He was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit. And then Frank is handsome. Okay. That is the reason why Eveline might have fallen in love with him, right? What is Frank's profession? Frank is a sailor. He works in a ship. Under the Allen Line, right? It's called the Allen Line. That is a shipping company. So Frank's job is that he is a sailor. He started as a deck boy, okay? That means he is not a deck boy now. Frank is actually a sailor. A sailor is a person who works in a ship, right? He started as a deck boy at a pound a month on a ship of the Allen Line going out to Canada. He told her the names of the ships he had been on and the names of the different services. He had sailed through the Straits of Magellan and he told her stories of the terrible Patagonians. Again, Patagonians are kind of a tribal people who live in, you won't believe this, Patagonia. Uh, when I talk about Patagonians, I am remi reminded about the Dubliners. The Dubliners are the people who live in Dublin. Also, it's a short story collection published in 1914, written by the Irish writer James Joyce. Out of these 16 short stories, we find Eveline. So that is what we are learning right now. So um, how well she remembered the first time she had seen Frank. He was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit. It seemed a few weeks ago, he was standing at the gate. His peaked cap, again, sailor's cap, He's wearing a sailor's cap, his peaked cap pushed back on his head and his hair tumbled forward over his face of bronze. How can you prove that Frank was handsome? Boom, he had a face of bronze. So this is kind of a what? Again, was his face really made of bronze or is it a metaphor? That is a metaphor 
a metaphor that proves that Frank is a handsome individual, right? If you don't know what metaphors are, don't worry. We'll talk about these in the future. At the moment, exclusively focus on Everline by James Joyce out of the six short stories in your syllabus, okay? In your syllabus, there are six short stories. But then there is a short story collection called The Dubliners. And in that short story collection, there are 16 short stories. And Everline is one of those 16. He was standing at the gate, his peaked cap pushed back on his head and his hair tumbled forward over a face of bronze. Then they had come to know each other. He used to meet her outside the stores where Eveline worked every evening and she and see her home. Frank used to escort Eveline home. This is before they fell in love. Now they have fallen in love and they are about to elope. What do you mean by elope? Running away and getting married. Running away secretly and getting married. So Eveline is about to elope with Frank. Where is Eveline going to run away to? He, she is going to run away with Frank to Buenos Aires. Where is Buenos Aires? It is in Argentina. What's the other option? She can stay at home. Where does Eveline live? Eveline lives in Dublin. And don't you forget, this is a dilemma. Dilemma. What is a dilemma? A dilemma is a situation where you are given a couple of choices and they are important. You can only choose one couple of choices, which are very important for your life. A dilemma, and this is the predicament found in the plot. What do you mean by plot? Plot key and story. Who is the protagonist? Eveline is the protagonist. And who is the antagonist? Eveline's father is the antagonist. He took her to see the bohia, then they came to know each other. He used to meet her outside the stores every evening and she see her home. He took her to the Bohemian Girl, that is a opera, a famous opera. He took her to see the Bohemian Girl and she felt elated, she felt happy as she sat in an unaccustomed part of the theater with him. She, she sat at a unfamiliar, a new part of the theater with Frank. Again, Frank is her boyfriend. She is going to elope with Frank. What's Frank's job? Frank is a sailor who works in the what line? Allen line. And um, she is about to run away with him to Buenos Aires in Argentina. So this is the uh, flashback where Frank had taken Eveline to watch or to see the Bohemian Girl, a famous opera. He was awfully fond of music and sang a little. People knew that they were courting, courting, can, mm, dating, right? People knew that they were courting. And when he sang about the lass, lass is a fine girl, the lass, the fine girl that loves a sailor. I don't forget what is Frank's job. He started as a deck boy in the Allen line, but now he's a sailor. Uh, who loves, that loves a sailor, she always felt pleasantly confused. Huh, pleasantly confused. She was happy, but she was confused. That right there is clearly a oxymoron. When two opposite things or contradictory ideas are put together. Good examples for oxymorons are mad genius, mad scientist, bitter sweet, tall short, poor rich. For example, if you say that Javed sir is a it's a oxymoron. Here we find an oxymoron. It's called pleasantly confused. Who was pleasantly confused? Eveline, the 19-year-old protagonist who falls in love with a sailor called Frank and faces a predicament, a dilemma, a dilemma, where she can stay at home, stay in Dublin, her home, or she can uh, elope with Frank to Buenos Aires in Argentina. There we are. So if you have memorized all of this, put your hands up. If you were able to memorize all of these important parts, put your hands up. Not that difficult, right? Again, hope you remember 1914, right? That is when the Dubliners was published. 16 short stories were found in the Dubliners. Eveline was one of those short stories. Eveline is a 19-year-old protagonist, right? And then apart from that, 
um, Eveline falls in love with a sailor and is about to elope with him to Buenos Aires in Argentina. She has another option in her dilemma. She can stay home in Dublin. Okay. He was awfully fond of music and sang a little. People knew that they were courting. And when he sang about the lass that loves a sailor, again, Frank is a sailor, she always felt pleasantly confused. He used to call her Poppins. Poppins is colloquial language, okay? So what do you mean by colloquial language? Language that is informal yet regional. Another example for colloquial language, in Sri Lanka, we use the word machang, bro, right? Vastua, ratarang, uncle. Uncle is also a very famous colloquial language we use in Sri Lanka. Now, for example, imagine if someone on the road dropped their wallet, you'll be like, uncle, uncle, persek, uncle, uncle. That is colloquial language. Is the person who dropped his wallet really your uncle? Absolutely not, okay? It's colloquial language, not archaic language, okay? Archaic language is formal and outdated. Formal, outdated language is called archaic language. Thou, thy, dost. Kind of like you might have read Go and Catch a Falling Star by James Dunn, another poem in your syllabus. Three stanzas, nine lines per stanza. Go and Catch a Falling Star by... Uh, uh, John Dunn, not James Dunn, apologies, John Dunn. So that is a good example for archaic language, okay? But here we find colloquial language. Colloquial language has two qualities. One, it is informal. The second quality is that it is regional. Now, for example, can you use the colloquial language uncle in America? Absolutely not. In America, they won't understand if you call a stranger uncle. The stranger would be confused, right? Another example, you might have heard of the word mama in Tamil, right? Osulriya mama. So mama has many meanings in Tamil. It can mean uncle. It can mean a person whom you want to marry, mama, right? So again, colloquial language has many meanings, okay? Sometimes an area might have a mama. I don't know. So basically, colloquial language belongs to a region and it is informal. All right, we're going to move forward. He was awfully fond of music and sang a little. People knew that they were courting, dating. And when he sang about the lass, the fine girl that loves a sailor, she always felt pleasantly confused. She used to call her poppins out of fun. For fun, he called her poppins. That's a nickname, right? He has given her the nickname Poppins. You guys might know that there is a drama in your syllabus called The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams, right? The Glass Menagerie. Put your hands up if you've read it, read the drama. There are five dramas in your syllabus. Out of the five dramas, you have to choose two dramas, okay? Here's my advice. Don't choose the Shakespearean dramas. They are crazy complicated. We'll be learning about the Shakespearean dramas. But don't uh, use or don't, uh, don't try to write about the Shakespearean dramas in the exam unless you are really good with them, okay? Unless you have spent at least an year learning the Shakespearean dramas. If not, don't choose them in the exam. Choose the dumb waiter and then choose the glass menagerie. In the glass menagerie, what was Laura's nickname? Laura... The, she was also crippled, right? Laura in the glass, glass menagerie was also crippled. What was her nickname? Given to her, by, given to her by Jim. Jim gave her a nickname called Blue Roses, exactly. Blue Roses was, the, um, was her nickname. It was, a, uh, it was kind of like a wordplay with her condition called pleurosis. She was crippled, right? Laura was crippled in her leg. And the reason for her disability was a condition called pleurosis. But Jim, another character in the drama, The Glass Menagerie, did not know what pleurosis was. He called her Blue Roses. Isn't that crazy? Okay, there's a, another easier drama called The Dumb Waiter. In your syllabus, here's the secret. The easiest drama in your syllabus is The Dumb Waiter, not Siswa Banse is Dead. Siswa Banse is Dead is very short, by the way. Then we have the Shakespearean dramas. What are the Shakespearean dramas in your syllabus? Othello and the Tempest. Really difficult, okay? 
per Shakespearean drama, you have nearly 10 characters. In one Shakespearean drama, you have more than 10 or nearly 10 characters. You take a look at the glass menagerie, only four characters, Amanda, Jim, Laura, and Tom. And take the dumb waiter, there are only three characters. There is Gus and Ben, and finally we have Wilson in the dumb waiter. So again, the dumb waiter is the easiest drama in your syllabus. If you're hoping to do your A-levels uh, this year or the next year, 2022 or 2023, remember that Javits have told you the dumb waiter is the easiest drama in your syllabus. Do not trust any other dramas. Surely, do not trust the Shakespearean dramas, Othello and The Tempest. We'll talk about that later. So right now, we're focusing on James Joyce's Eveline. And don't you forget, Nangi, Eveline is one out of 16 short stories found in the short story collection called The Dubliners. And Eveline, the, the Dubliners, was published in 1914 by James Joyce, Irish writer. Uh, it is about a protagonist who is facing a predicament uh, a dilemma and the predicament, the dilemma is that she can stay home in Dublin or she can move to, she can elope, elope with her lover. What's the name of her lover? Frank to Buenos Aires in Monatinad, Argentina, baby. Okay, we got that covered. First of all, it had been an excitement for her to have a fellow, a boyfriend, and then she had begun to like him. He had tales. He had stories of distant countries. He had fallen on his feet in Buenos Aires. He had found a home in Buenos Aires. We talked about this, right? So where is Eveline about to run away to? She is about to run away to Buenos Aires. That is in Argentina. Argentina, right? Buenos Aires. In Argentina. So she's about to run away to Buenos Aires in Argentina. He had, uh, he said, and had come over to the old country. Old country here is where Eveline lived. Where did Eveline live? Dublin, right? What's the old country here? Dublin, Kamar, Ireland. Ireland. And this is in the United Kingdom, right? Dublin, Ireland in the United Kingdom, Nangi. Just for a holiday. Eveline's father, again, is the antagonist, is the villain, and he opposes her relationship with Frank. Of course, her father had found out the affair with Frank and had forbidden her to have anything to say to him, to Frank. I know these sailor chaps, he said. That's the father's dialogue. What does he say? I know these sailor chaps. He doesn't trust these sailor chaps. Tell me, Nangi, again, chaps is what language? Colloquial language, right? It is, it is informal and regional. Chap is colloquial language. Nonetheless, Eveline's father did not approve uh, the relationship that Eveline had with Frank. That is why Eveline wants to monolope. She wants to elope. Hope you understand that, okay? We're going to move forward. So, um, here it is. Eveline's plan of running away home here, all right, running away from home, apologies. Where is she going to run away to? She is going to run away to Buenos Aires, Nangi. Everything changes. Now she was going to go away like the others. Who left Eveline, by the way? You might know uh, Ernest and Harry are Eveline's cowder. Husbands, I'll give you. Ernest and Harry are Eveline's brothers. Who is the brother that is alive? Harry is alive and Ernest? Said the Bochi. Uh, who else left Eveline? Eveline's friends, the Waters, the Divines, and the Duns. Who died? Well done, Sarah. Tizzy Dun, said the Bochi. And then we don't even know where little Key Oak the crippled is. When I say crippled, who do you think about? You think about Laura in uh, The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. You think about Pulley, right? Pulley was found in what novel? Pulley was found in Nectar in a Sieve, right? The, the leper, the beggar boy, right? The beggar boy in Nectar in a Sieve, the leper, he didn't have fingers. Pulley did not have fingers. In chapter number one, in Nectar in a Sieve, you find Pulley. The urchin boy, well done, Sanduni. 
Um, so in this case, you're right, you're right. Laura is the little sister, you're right. In the glass, Minajari Abdullah. We're gonna move forward. Tyrion Lannister, that, that's, in, that's in Game of Thrones, right? He was not crippled, he was a do-off, right? Tyrion Lannister was a do-off in Game of Thrones. All right, we're gonna move forward. Raise your hands up if you watch Game of Thrones, by the way. I'm not a huge fan, but uh, nobody, that's, that's very smart, okay? Because Game of Thrones is an adults only TV series, okay? My God, Game of Thrones is an adults only TV series, okay? Haram, haram, okay? I watch Game of Thrones for two reasons. I'll, I'll talk about those two reasons later. Uh, at the moment, we're talking about Everline by James Joyce, one of 16 short stories found in the short story collection called Kian, called the Dubliners, published in 1914. It is about a female protagonist who is how many years old? 19 years of age, who faces a predicament, a dilemma, a dilemma, staying in Dublin with her family or eloping with Frank to Buenos Aires in Monatina, the Argentina. If you have that in your pocket, you can write anything about Everline in the exam by Venanangepa, but you have to memorize the extracts, okay? So memorizations of the extracts will also be done in my classes. At the moment, we are talking about Everline's plans of running away from home. What is the word that we used? Eloping, right? Eloping with Frank, uh, the sailor, right? Frank, the sailor, I'll just say Frank. Everything changes. Now she was going to go away like the others to leave her home. She had consented to go away to leave her home. Was that wise? Amata City, the eye is a question, right? But can we answer the question? Can the reader be like, no, no, Everline, that is not wise? We can't answer that question. That is clearly a rhetorical question. Questions that can't be answered are called rhetorical questions. And we can give real life examples for rhetorical questions. For example, let's say that you do something stupid. I don't know, maybe you send a message to a stranger. You send, uh, you send a text to a stranger, right? Um, you, you break something, right? You break something at home. Your mom would ask you, are you mad? Pissuda, Paithiyama, those are also what questions? Rhetorical questions. They can't be answered. What is the effect of rhetorical questions? What do you guys think? To make the reader think. Rhetorical questions makes the reader think. They stimulate. They stimulate what? Thought. Was that wise? She tried to weigh each side of the question, but in her new home, in a distant unknown country, it would not be like that. Then she would be married. She, Eveline, people would treat her with respect then. So here's the other scenario. Here's the other scenario. Everything changes, that's hyperbole. You're right, I agree, Sarah. People would treat her with respect then. If she got married, people would treat her with respect. She would not be treated as her mother had been. My God, where is Eveline's mama now? Said the Bochi. Eveline's mother is dead. And what can you tell me about Eveline's, um, Eveline's mother? We have not yet read it, but you guys know that Eveline's mom is dead. Uh, and not only that, she was mad. She was mad, okay? She had mental problems. Eveline's mother had. So um, that's why people did not treat Eveline's mother with respect. When someone has gone mad, people don't respect them, right? That's found in Eveline also. So Eveline's deceased mother, Eveline's mother who is dead, also suffered with mental disorders. So that is something that you should remember. So Eveline's mother also lived a very tough life. She had mental disorders and obviously she had died very, not young, but she had died too early. All right, um, she would not be treated as her mother had been. So this shows that Eveline's mother was not treated well. She was treated badly. She was about to explore another life with Frank. Frank was very kind, mainly open-hearted. She was to go away with him by the night boat. Ah, mm, again, what do you call this? Eloping, eloping. She was about to elope with Frank run away in secrecy and get married. She was about to elope with Frank. 
uh, go away with him by the night boat to be his wife and to live with him in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, where he had a home waiting for her. The stigma of running away. And now you guys see this in real life also, especially when a girl, a young girl, how old is Eveline? 19 years old, right? When a young girl commits a mistake or does something inappropriate, everybody knows about it, right? Everybody talks about it. This is the stigma faced by women. So in this example, you see Eveline wanting to run away, but she contemplates. Contemplates means she thinks. She's thinking about the stigma of running away. What would they say of her in the stores where she worked when they found out that she had run away with a fellow? That again, Nangi, is a mona question there. Rhetorical question. Uh, why is it hyperbole? Because, Sarah, everything does not change, right? I mean, everything can't change, right? Some things will always stay the same. So when you say everything changes, isn't that hyperbole? Hope that makes sense. Like everything can't change, right? Like some things always stay the same. So when you say everything changes, that's called hyperbole. Hope that makes sense, okay? Uh, so when something is not literal, when something is not actual, it's hyperbole. Another example, I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse. I don't really want to eat a horse. It's hyperbole. Everything does not really change. Hope that makes sense, okay? Thank you for your question, by the way. What would they say of her in the stores when they found out that she had run away with a fellow? Say she was a fool, perhaps, and her place would be filled up by advertisement. Again, uh, it shows how people would gossip about a girl who would elope, who had eloped with her lover, who had run away and gotten married. Odipoi Kalyanam Kartine, right? She would not cry many tears at leaving the stores. Miss Gavin's spitefulness, there is a character called Miss Gavin who is found in the stores where Eveline, Eveline did what? Where Eveline worked in, where Eveline worked in. Miss Gavin would be glad. She had always had an edge over Eveline, especially whenever there were people listening. Miss Hill, don't you see these ladies are waiting? Look lively, Miss Hill. So who is the person who is speaking this? Not Javid, sir, no, no, Miss Gavin. Miss Gavin is a spiteful person who is constantly against Eveline. Look lively, Miss Hill. Miss Hill, don't you see these ladies are waiting? So where do you find Miss Gavin? Miss Gavin is found in the stores where Eveline worked. That's too easy, okay? That's too easy. Uh, and then finally, we find Eveline's father's violence. Don't you forget? Eveline's father was a, uh, what is the antagonist, right? He was antagonized. And right now we see Eveline's father is further antagonized. Eveline's father was a violent character. Eveline is the female protagonist. How old is Eveline? Eveline is 19 years old. Female protagonist, 19 years old. And then we have Eveline's father. And Eveline's father is a violent character. He is the antagonist, the opposite of the protagonist. Even now, though she was over 19, here it is, she's over 19 years old, she sometimes felt herself in danger of her father's violence. She knew, and the word violence is used here, right? It's a negative connotation, a very serious word, violence is. She knew it was that that had given her the palpitations. Her father's violence made her heart beat, made, made her pulse rise. She's afraid of her father's violence. She knew it was that that had given her the palpitations and made her afraid. But lately, had begun to threaten her, her father. But lately, he had begun to threaten her and say what he would do to her only for her dead mother's sake. And then Saturday nights, she fights with her father. There is a quarrel every Saturday night. The invariable, unchanging squabble fight for money on Saturday nights had begun to weary her unspeakably. Every Saturday night, she used to fight with her father, and that is also tiresome for her. So now what is Eveline doing? She is weighing the pros and the cons of 
staying in Dublin, remember the predicament, remember the dilemma, the dilemma, remember the predicament, remember the dilemma, stay in Dublin with her family or elope with Frank to Buenos Aires. So she's weighing the pros and the cons. So right now, home has a lot of negatives, right? Her drunken father. The invariable squabble for money on Saturday nights had begun to weary her unspeakably. He was usually fairly bad on Saturday night. She always gave her entire wages. So you know that Eveline works in the stores. And who works with Eveline? Miss Gavin, right? Miss Gavin is a spiteful person. She is always against Eveline. So she always gave her entire salary, her wages, seven shillings. And Harry, Harry is Eveline's brother, don't forget. Who are the two brothers of Eveline? Harry and Ernest. Harry is alive, but Ernest, I owe, said the Pochi. Who else died? Eveline's estranged, mad mother died. And also Tizzy Dunn is another character who died, right? Remember Eveline's playfellows, the Duns, the Waters, the Divines, <clears throat> the Divines, right? She always gave her entire wages, seven shillings, and uh, Eveline's sisters are not named Fatima. They are not given names, but Eveline had sisters also. And then Kiog, well done, little Kiog Sanduni, the crippled, was another friend of Eveline's. Uh, he used to keep nicks. What do you mean by keep nicks? watch on the lookout for Eveline's father who used to hunt them using a what thorn stick? A black thorn stick, right? She always gave her entire wages, seven shillings, and Harry always sent up what he could. But the trouble was to get the money from her father. He said that she used to squander waste the money, that she had no head, that he wasn't going to give her his hard-earned money to throw about the streets and much more. But then Sunday, Eveline is forced to go grocery shopping. In the end, he would give her, who is he? He is Eveline's father, right? Eveline's father, again, the antagonist, don't you forget Nangi? The antagonist, Eveline's father, would give her the money and ask her, had asked her, had she any intention of buying Sunday's dinner? Then she had to rush out as quick as she could and do her marketing. Here, marketing is used in the old sense. Marketing here means buying groceries. Do her marketing, holding her black leather purse tightly in her hand as she elbowed her way through the crowds and returned home late under her load of provisions. Provisions, QA, groceries. If you have learned bringing Tony home by Tissabe Sekara, a great uh, Olival novel, by the way. In the Olival syllabus, there are three novels. Hope you remember for literature. We have The Vendor of Sweets, Bringing Tony Home, Prince and the Pauper. The word provisions was found in Bringing Tony Home. Some of you might even remember if you did literature for your O-levels. Right now, we are learning literature for A-levels, subject number 73, Nangi. And this is obviously exclusively for arts pupils. We are learning about Eveline, one of 16 short stories found in James Joyce's collection called The Dubliners, published in 1914. And it is a, Eveline is about a female protagonist, a 19 year old female protagonist who is facing a predicament. What is the dilemma? What's the dilemma? The dilemma is stay in Dublin, stay home in Dublin, or elope with Frank, her lover, to Buenos Aires in Argentina. You know that, you know a lot about Eveline, okay? There is, but now, so even though Eveline's father is an antagonist, she feels, no, actually, Manal, 16 short stories were found in the collection called the Dubliners. There is a collection called the Dubliners. 1914 is when that collection was published by James Joyce, Irish male writer. In that, we find 16 short stories. In our syllabus, in the national syllabus, we find six short stories. English language and literature for A-levels, we have six short stories. That's a different story, okay? Right now, we are talking exclusively about Eveline. So now, 
Eveline feels sorry for her father. Her father was becoming old lately, she noticed. He would miss her. Sometimes he could be very nice. Not long before when she had been laid up when she was ill, for a day, in her bed for a day, he had read out a ghost story and made toast bread for her at the fire. So again, Eveline's father, even though he is an antagonist, sometimes he can be nice. So Eveline is not sure. What is the predicament? What is the dilemma? What's the dilemma? Stay in Buenos, uh, stay in Dublin with her father, with her family, or elope with Frank to Buenos Aires. Eveline is still not sure. What's the easiest novels? To be honest, Shamla, the easiest novel is Nectar and a Sieve. So keep Nectar and a Sieve for the analysis part, appreciation part. And then Test of the Dubervilles. Uh, do not choose July's people. July's people is quite difficult. Life of Pi is very long. Remained of the day is also quite long. The easiest novels are Tests of the Dubervilles. And then we have, uh, we've we got Nectar and a Sieve by Kamala Markhan there. We'll talk about those in the future. So at the moment, Eveline, we know everything about Eveline. And right now, we have a pleasant flashback past memory. Flashback about Eveline's father. Another day when their mother was alive. Again, obviously now Eveline's mama is dead. Did she die a sane woman or did she die with insanity? She died insane, right? She was mad when she died. Uh, another day when their mother was alive, they had all gone for a picnic to the hill of Hoth. She remembered her father putting on her mother's bonnet. Bonnet means a cap, especially for ladies, ladies cap, that make to make the children laugh. But now Eveline has no protector. And now she had nobody to protect her. Ernest was dead and Harry, who was in the church, Decorating business was nearly always down somewhere in the country. So what does this mean? Ernest is dead. Remember the two brothers of, of Eveline? We have Ernest and Harry. So Ernest obviously is dead and Harry is alive, but he is in the church decorating business and he was on the country. So here country means the rural side, Game, Game area, Ernest. Actually, no. Um, Woni, Kiara, I thought that you had another name, Woni Kiara. I, I read your name completely differently. So, Woni, bonnet, uh, uh, I'm not sure that bonnet means curly hair, not exactly. There is something called a car, car bonnet, okay? And then this bonnet is actually a cap. It's a hat worn by women, a bonnet. So, the reason why Eveline's dad was able to put on the bonnet is because it's a, imagine him putting on his, his uh, wife's hair, Hope that makes sense. I don't, I don't exactly know if there's another meaning for bonnet, but here, but here it's a, it's a bonnet. Here, bonnet is a cap. So I have no idea. Thanks a lot for for that, uh, Kiara. But um, but here, here it means a cap, exclusively worn by women. Okay, men can't wear bonnets. But why did Eveline's dad wear the bonnet to make the children laugh? Right. So in the past, Eveline's dad was a bit good. Even now. Eveline's dad is a bit good, even though he was the antagonist. He was the villain. It's all right. He's all right, okay? So now Eveline has no protector, right? Quite important. I warn this for my future session, so I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to bold it in red. Eveline's promise to her mother. So there's another, uh, there's another exposition here. Down far in the avenue, she could hear a street organ playing. She knew the air, strange that it should come that very night when she was about to escape. Uh, to remind her of the promise to her mother, her promise to keep the home together as long as she could. That's the promise Eveline made to her mother, her promise that she would keep the home together as long as she could. And then, sadly, Eveline's mother passes away. She remembered the last night of her mother's illness. She was again in the, clo in the closed dark room at the other side of the hall. And outside, she heard a melancholy air of Italy, the organ players. She heard a long time ago, okay? This is when Eveline's mother died, the organ player, and had been ordered to go away and given sixpence. She remembered her father 
stuttering back into the sick room saying, damned Italians coming over here. So this is the episode regarding Eveline's mother's death. This is quite important. As she mused, thought of the pitiful vision of her mother's life laid its spell on the very quick of her being that her mother's life of commonplace sacrifice, uh, sacrifice closing in final craziness her mother was uh, her mother was accustomed to sacrificing right usually women of a house are expected to um are expected to be the you know sacrifice right are expected to sacrifice a lot which i think is unfair but then here we see that eveline's mother in the end went mad she did not die a sane person she died with insanity Life of commonplace sacrifice closing in final craziness. How can you prove that Eveline's mother died of craziness? The word is given right here, final craziness. So again, when you learn literature, especially for the A-levels, you have to remember that this, you should think like a lawyer. Whatever you say, you should be able to prove it. Your memory must be really sharp. You should remember everything, especially the dates, the numbers. You should remember everything. So literature is not about being creative. It's about being analytical and thinking like, not like an artist. Literature is about thinking like a lawyer. So as she heard again, her mother's voice saying with foolish insistence, uh, Deravan Siran, Deravan Saran. This doesn't make sense, okay? So when her mother was dying in her deathbed, she was saying with foolishness, uh, Deravan Saran, Deravan Saran, in the resource book, in the teacher's guide, this does not have any meaning, okay? So her mother died with insanity, with in while um, rambling incoherently. Hope that makes sense, okay? Eveline's mother died with insanity while rambling incoherently. What, what did she ramble? Deravan Saran, it doesn't have any meaning, okay? Who says that this doesn't have a meaning? The resource book and the monoguide, the teacher's guide. All of the ideas that I have taken is from the teacher's guide. The dates, the numbers, the situation, the terminologies, everything is taken from the teacher's guide. When something is absolutely I can. We'll talk about Eveline's promise to her mother, okay? So right here, Eveline had promised to her mother that she would keep the home together. But can Eveline keep the home together if she's about to panzi pore? What do you call panzi pore in English? Elope, elope. Whom is she going to elope with? Elope with Frank, her sailor lover. Don't you forget, elope means running away and getting married. So now Eveline is not sure whether she should run away with Frank or whether she should stay at home in Dublin and take care of her family or keep her home together, as per the promise Eveline made for her mother, right? So um, here, here we see, hope you understand, Amra. Uh, presently, now we see Eveline uh, in, in the present state, right? She sat at the window watching the evening invade the avenue. Her head was leaned against the window curtains, and in her nostrils was the odor of dusty cretone. She was tired. Her home is also dusty, Ani home. She looked round the room. Now we are in the present, okay? In the beginning, we were in the past. What back do you call it? We were in a flashback, but now we are in the present. Deravan Saran means end of pleasure. Is pain. No, sir, that, that is in Google, right? If you Google what Deravan Saran is, it says end of pleasure is pain. That's in Google, Nangi. In our syllabus, as per the teacher's guide, it is incoherent ramblings. Do you understand, Sarah? You can't use Google for your learning because sometimes it might not be recognized from our teacher's guide. So in the resource book, in the teacher's guide, they say that Deravan Saran is incoherent rambling. So you said that in pleasure, there is pain, right? What's the language, Sarah? What's the language that Deravan Saran is? It's not a real language, right? Hope you understand. Like Google it. Tell me the language of Deravan Saran. It's not Latin. It's not Italian. It is not Europe. It does not make sense. But in Google, they would say Deravan Saran means in the end of pleasure is pain. 
But hope you understand, Sara. So when we learn literature, when we learn in the A-level syllabus for arts, we have to be very thorough with our teacher's guide. We have to be really thorough with the resource book given to us by the government. We can't go out of our textbook, okay? We're going to move forward. Home. She looked round the room, reviewing all its familiar objects, which she had dusted once a week for so many years, wondering where on earth all the dust came from. In her home, anyway, she had shelter and food. She had those whom she had known all her life about her. Of course, she had to work hard, but hard both in the house and at business. So again, home life and work life is hard, right, for Eveline? In her home anyway, she had shelter and food. She had those whom she had known all her life about her. Of course, she had to work hard both in the house and at business. She had hard work to keep the house together, as per her promise to her mother, right? She uh, actually there, this is, a, uh, this is given in the short story, dude. It's not off. It's actually an off, but in the short story, it's off. It's kind of like colloquial language. Of course, like colloquial language without saying off, it's like, of course, of course. She had to work hard both in the house and at business. She had hard work to keep the house together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly. We don't know who these children are, okay? All of Eveline's siblings are either dead or adults. She had sisters and she had two brothers. What were the name of her two brothers? Ernest and we have, we have Harry, right? Harry Potter, Harry and Ernest. Don't you forget, Ernest is Seth the Bochi. Ernest Hemingway, the guy who wrote Wet, uh, I mean, Cat in the Rain, Cat in the Rain, right? Not Wet Pussy, Cat in the Rain. And um, we also have, uh, you know, Ernest Rutherford who discovered, I don't know, something, a scientist, right? So all of them are dead, okay? Ernest is dead. Harry Potter is still alive, okay? That's how you remember. Javed says new methods of learning. Maybe she's taking care of a little. No, no, Zimra. In the beginning, it's mentioned that uh, all of them are adults now. In the beginning of, so again, you have to think like a lawyer. In the beginning of this, it's mentioned that all of them are adults now. So again, it's not made clear who these young children are. Uh, hope that, hope you understand. Uh, she had hard work to keep the home together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly and got their meals regularly. It was hard work, a hard life. But now that she was about to leave it, she did not find it a whole, it wholly undesirable. But now that she was about to leave it, she did not find it a wholly undesirable life. This example shows that she is in a predicament. She is facing a dilemma. A dilemma. What's the dilemma? Stay home in Dublin and keep her home together or elope with Frank to Buenos Aires. So again, the dilemma is quite simple. Uh, she does not know what she can do now, right? She doesn't know exactly what to do. She wants to run away. She wants to elope with Frank. But now that she was about to leave it, she did not find it a wholly undesirable life. And then uh, again, she thinks about the familiar objects at home. This part isn't important. We can skip these parts, okay? Not important, not important. There is a, um, there is a picture of a priest on the wall. This priest is now in Melbourne, Australia, one of Eveline's father's friends. Do you understand the benefit of having a digested document? We don't have to read everything. We only read the important parts. These aren't important. And, and there's also a picture frame of, the, of Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. Uh, you might not have heard of her, but in Christianity and Catholicism, um, Margaret Mary Alacoque was a saint in, in, in the religion, yeah, in Christianity, in Catholicism, in Catholic and Christian religions, uh, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, like Coca-Cola, Alacoque, uh, was a saint. Okay, that's it. That's basically it. Not important. And now it's evening, right? And she has written two letters. One letter is for her father and the other letter is for her brother, who is alive, right? 
Harry, who is alive, dear, what happened to Ernest? Ernest is, said the Bochi. And time is running out, but in the end, Everline is impulsive. What do you mean by impulsive? You can get the note, okay? I'll explain in the end how you can get the notes. Uh, there is a lot more notes, okay? Now, for example, let me show you. We have so many notes. For example, Interpret of Melodies. We have a presentation for it. It is a really difficult short story, but we have a completed presentation for memorizing important extracts. You can use this presentation and memorize the important extracts. In Interpret of Melodies, we have notes for the novels, Nectar and a Sieve, Test of the Dubervilles. We have notes for the, uh, the dramas, The Dumb Waiter. We've got uh, The Glass Menagerie. So I'll definitely, um, definitely uh, will, uh, what do you call, uh, show you how to get the notes from me, okay? So we're almost done. And now Eveline faces an impulse. She's going to leave now, okay? What is impulsive? She doesn't think. She doesn't think, okay? So impulsively, she wants to leave her home now. She stood up in a sudden impulse of terror. Escape! She must escape. Frank would save her. Who is Frank? Her lover, sailor lover. He would give her life, perhaps love too, but she wanted to live. Why should she be unhappy? She had the right to happiness. Frank would take her in his arms, fold her in his arms. He would save her. And now there is a flash forward to the station, uh, Eveline is in the, in the boatyard, the dock with Frank. She is about to leave with Frank to Cohede. Buenos Aires in Argentina. She's about to leave with Frank, okay? But will she leave with Frank? No, I'll tell you why. The station was full of soldiers with brown baggages through the wide doors of the sheds. She caught a glimpse of the black mass of the boat. Uh, lying in beside the quay, the key, the key, apologies. It's called a key, okay? Uh, key is an area found in the harbor, or is, is the harbor basically, the key. It's called a key, okay? Pronounced key, spelled quay. Um, key wall with illuminated portholes. She stood among the swaying crowd in the station at the north wall. He held her hand and she knew that he was speaking to her, saying something about the passage over and over again. She answered nothing, none of Frank's questions. She felt her cheek pale and cold and out of a maze of distress. That's a metaphor. What's a maze? A straight road or a road that you, have, you get lost in. What's a maze? A straight road. A road that you get lost in is called a maze. So how is her uh, predicament visualized? Her predicament is visualized using this metaphor, maze of distress. I'll talk about metaphors in the class, okay? So metaphors are when you take two nouns and compare them directly, but they are fake. For example, glass of water is not a metaphor. But glass of love is a metaphor. How can you find a glass of love? Glass is a noun. Love is a noun. Glass of love is fake. But glass of water is real. Glass of water is not a metaphor. Glass of love is a metaphor. And well done. Face of bronze. Sanduni is also a metaphor. Who had a face of bronze? It was Frank, Eveline's lover, whom Eveline was about to elope with. What do you mean by eloping? Panji poet, kalyanam mudikere, panala gihin, kasa the baminava, running away and getting married, eloping. Hope you understand the word, okay? These are words that you can use in the exam also. She answered nothing. She felt her cheek pale and out of a maze of distress, she prayed to God to direct her, to show her what was her duty. The boat, blew a mournful whistle into the mist. If she went, tomorrow she would be out on the, on the sea with Frank, streaming towards Buenos Aires. Don't forget, where is Buenos Aires? That's in Argentina. She's about to run away, elope with Frank to Buenos Aires. Their passage had become blocked, uh, booked, apologies, booked. Could she still draw back after all he had done for her? That's a rhetorical question. Now she's having second thoughts. She doesn't want to go with Frank. Her distress awoke a nausea. Nausea means sickness. 
a nausea in her body and she kept moving her lips in silent, fervent prayer. Silent, intense prayer. She was praying to God because Eveline doesn't know what to do. If you have two options and you don't know what to do, what is it called? The dilemma. It's called a dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. So she is facing a dilemma, staying in Dublin with her family and keeping her home together or eloping with Frank to Buenos Aires. Finally, Eveline comes to a realization. Finally, she comes into a realization. She doesn't want to go with Frank. Um, here it is. No, 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 it was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy amid the seas. She sent a cry of anguish. She, she yelled, she cried, she can't go. And what does Frank do? Eveline, Evie, he calls her name, come. No, 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 it was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy amid the seas. She sent a cry of anguish. Eveline, Evie, he rushed beyond the barrier and called to her to follow. Who is he? He is Frank. He rushed beyond the barrier and called her to follow. He was shouted at to go, but he still called to her. She set her white face to him, passive like a helpless animal. A simile. Eveline looked like a helpless animal. Her eyes gave him no sign of love or farewell or recognition. In the end, what does Eveline do? Does she elope with Frank to Buenos Aires? Or does she stay in Dublin? She stays in Dublin. So here is the introduction paragraph. Introduction paragraph for Eveline, okay? So how, what can we say about Eveline? We are done, okay? We are done with the uh, seminar. Before we go, I want to revise what we did in the exam. You should write a paragraph like this. Monaline, Eveline, Kama by the Irish, Irish, Malay writer, Kama, James Bond, James Joyce is one out of how many short stories? One out of 16 short stories. Okay, well done, Nangi. Well done, Sanduni. Is one out of 16 short stories. One out of, here it is. You don't have to write this down. In the end, you can take a screenshot, okay? If not, drop me a message. Here's Javid says phone number. It's not double seven, nine six three nine four three four. 963 9434 Drop me a message through WhatsApp. I'll share all of the PDF tutorials I have. Learning using my PDF tutorials are really easy. If you learn literature after you join my classes, it will be even more easier for you. Exclusively for A-level arts pupils. This is English language and literature, subject number 73. Speaking about numbers by the Irish male writer James Joyce is one out of 16, don't forget 16 uh, short stories, short stories, S-H-O-R-T, stories, O-R-I-E-S, found in the collection. Collection, what is it? Collection, the Dubliners, the Dubliners published, come on again, published in Kianikmanta, published in 1914. It's okay if you write numbers in without, without uh, spelling them out. It's okay if you write numbers, okay? Published in 1914. Uh, what else can we talk about? Narrated, narrated in the, narrated in the what person corner? First the third, the Kianikmanta, I believe in you. Genius, you guys are third person corner, third person corner. The plot revolves around a 19 year old female protagonist. What's her name? Eveline. One moment, Kama, who faces a predicament. Colon. The dilemma. The dilemma. Dilemma. The da damsel is also good, but we'll just say female protagonist, okay? Female protagonist is better. Uh, who faces a predicament, the dilemma uh, of, what is it? Kianikmanta, of staying, one moment, 
of remaining. Apologies, one moment. End. Give me a second. End here, the bottom. Second, where are we? Where are we? One second, here we are. We go to the end, very end, okay? Apologies for that. What is the a dilemma? The dilemma, a predicament, comma, comma, a dilemma. Predicament, comma, a dilemma. What's the dilemma? Colon, we are explaining the dilemma, right? Stay in Dublin, remain. Remain in Dublin with and keep. Can and keep her home together. Keep her home together as per the what? As per the promise, promise made to her, deranged, deranged mother, right? What do you mean by deranged mother? Isuned, her mom was mad. Pythium. Okay. Uh, remain in Dublin and keep her home together as per the promise made to her deranged mother or elope. What do you mean by elope? Elope can ne? Panela, genius you are, Zim, Zimra. Elope with Frank, her sailor, a sailor lover, a sailor sla, hyphen lover, sailor lover to be, be you, he knows. Iris Buenos Aires in Argentina. Oh, there it is. There's the introductory paragraph. Raise your hands up if you memorized all of this. If you can write a paragraph like this by yourself, put your hands up. Eveline, 19 year old protagonist, um, found in the short story Eveline by James Joyce, Irish male writer. Keep your hands up, Obiki. Keep your hands up. Uh, Irish male writer and Eveline was found in, is one of the 16 short stories found in uh, the short story collection called The Dubliners, published in 1914. Eveline, a 19 year old female protagonist, faces a predicament. D, dilemma, a dilemma. Stay home in Dublin and keep her family together as promised to her mother. Her what mother? Deranged mother, Pissu. Hadunama, right? Deranged mother or elope. Elope can ne? Odi boy, Kalyanam Katere, right? Panalagihing Baminova, elope with her lover, Frank, her sailor lover, Frank, to Buenos Aires in Argentina. That's it, baby. I'm so proud of you guys. If you want more tutorials, free tutorials, Drop a WhatsApp message to the number you see on your screen. Uh, memorize the uh, memorize this paragraph as quick as you can. Very proud of you, okay? Those of you who memorized the, this paragraph, I'm so proud of you because this is done in one month in your school, okay? In school, they would have taken one month until you were to memorize this paragraph. But right now, we memorize this in less than two hours. We memorized a lot regarding Everline by James Joyce. Uh, you can find uh, more tutorials if you drop a message to my WhatsApp number right here. Uh, such an honor, such a pleasure to be called your teacher, especially uh, today because you've given me two hours of your time. Uh, again, I shall see you next time in the next free seminar or I shall see you again in my class as your humble teacher. That with Javid, sir, baby. Flex with Javid, sir, baby. I'll see you later. Take care. All the best.